In this video, we're going to be looking at the arteries and veins that we can see in the upper limb and the lower limb. We'll look at the upper limb first. So starting off, let's look at the back view. So coming back to the subclavian veins that we had looked at previously, especially in terms of the aortic arch. So these branches that come off, so through here is the right subclavian artery. Coming through here is the left subclavian artery. And so as that left subclavian artery continues, at a certain point, it's going to be referred to as the axillary artery. As it's running through the armpit area is when it's called axillary. And for the practical, I'd never put the arrow like right at the junction between there. For subclavian, I'd put it back here. So you definitely know that subclavian axillary, put it out here somewhere. Okay, so uh, subclavian is going to become the axillary through there. And as this continues down through here, when it's in the arm, is when it's considered the brachial artery. Okay, these are going around the neck of the uh, humerus, the surgical neck, as the humerus sits into the scapula there. So let's turn this back around to look at the brachial artery. That's what you're feeling when you're listening to uh, someone's blood pressure. You're going to put the stethoscope kind of right along that brachial artery there. So a pretty big artery going down the arm. And then in the forearm, it's going to split. And these are named based on the bones that are in the forearm. So if you remember, on the medial side is the ulnar bone, ulna. So this is the ulnar artery. On the lateral side is the radius. So this is the radial artery. Okay, you can imagine this is like your thumb out here. That follow along that radial artery is going to come, and you can feel a pressure there, pulse pressure, right, like on the edge of the thumb. These are joining in the hands. This is referred to as the palmar arch. There's a couple layers. There's a superficial and a deep, but you just have to identify this as palmar arch. So with these models, you can assume they're going to be in anatomical position. So the most lateral one is radial artery. The more medial one is the ulnar artery. On the vein side, so we're going to have the same kind of veins. You have a brachial vein. You're going to have uh, ulnar vein, radial vein. You don't necessarily have to identify them on the practical. The veins we are going to focus on are the ones that don't have a corresponding artery. Okay, They don't have an artery that matches it. So looking at this one, there's one that comes out here on the lateral side and then one that's coming out here more on the medial side. So the one that's more lateral arching over is called the cephalic vein. So that one's coming out here on the lateral side. Medial side inside is the basilic vein through here. So think for kind of from medial to lateral, you got B, C. This can be, sometimes students confuse this with the basilar artery. Remember that was up here where that vertebral artery meets up. I think basilar starts to spell artery, basilar artery, and then you can think basilic is different as the vein. And then in the elbow region, right through here, this is called the median cubital vein. The median is connecting these two cubitals referring to the um, elbow. It's a common place to draw blood from. They're kind of looking for a vein in that area. Anticubitals, the region, so AC blood draw. Okay, so that's going to be the upper limb. Let's look at the lower limb. So lower limb, we're going to look coming back to the abdominal aorta. As it comes down here, it's going to split. And as it splits, this is when it's referred to as the iliac arteries. We have common iliac. There's going to be another split. So this is the common point before that. Think like your hip bone that's in the area, the ilium bone. So common iliac would be from the split off of abdominal aorta and before the next split occurs. So a pretty short segment, common iliac. And then we're going to have an internal and an external. Kind of like the relationship when we saw common carotid and then internal and external carotid. So coming in here, we're going to have the uh, internal iliac. I'm going to move this out of the way for now. So here's that internal iliac artery. And then over here is the external iliac artery. So just um, be sure you have iliac in the name. External iliac is then going to continue going down your leg. Once it's through here is when it's called the femoral artery. So a really big artery, large blood supply there. So running along the femur is the femoral artery. It's actually going to dive back to the back of your leg, and it's going to run behind your knee. And that's what these little things are representing, like wrapping around your knee. At this point, it's referred to as the popliteal artery, okay, the region behind your knee. So we have femoral up here. Down here is when it's called popliteal. And then we're going to have some more branches, and their names are a name for the bones that are here. So in the lower leg, the bone that's sitting more on the medial side is the tibia bone. 
The one on the lateral side is the fibula. So this is the fibular artery back here, or on the outside, the more lateral view. You might also see the term peroneal. It's like an older term for that. And then these two are both named with tibia. So sitting more towards the front, this is the anterior tibial artery, this one here. So that's anterior, shake it. This one is the posterior tibial artery. So the more medial one is posterior tibial, lateral is that fibular, and then coming up front is the anterior tibial. That one's gonna go and become, there's this artery on top of your foot called dorsalis pedis. So dorsalis, the dorsum, pedis refers to the foot, kind of like a pedal. Um, so that one's gonna be useful to check to make sure circulation's going all the way to the foot, uh, especially with like diabetics, they wanna be sure there's a strong enough pulse along that dorsalis pedis artery. Okay, so those are the arteries on the lower limb. And again, on the leg, you're gonna have a femoral vein. You're gonna have a similar splits going to fibular and tibial. Something interesting with procedures, like when they maybe want to inject some dye in the heart or sometimes when they need to get there, they actually start down here at the femoral vein, kind of insert and that um, wire will go all the way through the inferior vena cava till they actually get back to the heart. So that's a procedure they can do. So the veins, the different ones to know, we got this big long one coming in on the inside, medial side, this one that's kind of sitting out more on the lateral side. These both have saphenous in the name. This one's much bigger, this is the great saphenous vein. The one out here is a little bit smaller, we call it small saphenous vein. Okay, so those are gonna be the arteries and veins for the lower limb and the upper limb.